Here's a weird question. Do plants have skin like we do? Well, yes, and also not really. Just like how our skin protects us, plants have a thin outer layer that wraps around their whole body, roots, stem, and leaves. We call it the epidermal layer or simply the epidermis. And in this video, we are going to learn all about the epidermis, what it's made of, how it helps plant breathe, stay hydrated, and most importantly, stay safe. Now, unlike our skin, the epidermis doesn't sweat, it doesn't tan, and it definitely doesn't get pimples. Instead, if you look closely, it's more like a cling wrap. It is thin, it is clear, and it is sealed tightly. Sealed tightly. Let's take each of these characteristics one by one. And to do that, let's zoom into a leaf. On doing that, we see these multiple layers of cells. But for this video, we will just focus on the topmost and the bottommost layer. That is the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. If we look closely into these two layers, we will see that they are made of a single layer of cells. Single layer, which means they are thin, just how we mentioned. They are also clear or colorless. Colorless. So, if the epidermis is colorless, where do plants get their green color from? Well, the green color of plants comes from the layers between the epidermal layers, which is filled with mesophyll cells. These cells are loaded with chloroplast and hence are green in color. So the green color that we see in plants is actually the mesophyll cells shining through the clear epidermis. It's somewhat like enjoying a rainy day through a clear glass window. Okay, now you might ask, what about these woody stems? What about the woody stems? Where do they get their brown color from? Well, if you look closely, if you zoom in, you will see that the in the woody stems, which are, which are the older parts of the plant, the epidermal layer is replaced by a layer of dead tissue, which we call the cork. We'll learn more about cork in another video. For now, let's move on to the third characteristic of the epidermis. It is sealed tightly. What does that mean? You see, the cells of the epidermis, they are flat. They are flat, like little tiles. And uh, you've seen little tiles on a bathroom wall. They fit together snugly. They fit together snugly without leaving any gaps in between. And very similarly, the cells of the epidermal layer are packed tightly without any intercellular space. So there is no intercellular space in between. And this tight packing is super important because it locks in the water, it keeps out invaders like fungi, and it protects the plant from mechanical damage. Now think about this. Take a moment pause and think about this. Would it also work if the cells were round instead? You can try lining up marbles and no matter how, how hard you try, you will always end up with these little gaps which can compromise with the protective abilities of the epidermis. But hang on. If the epidermis is so, is so, so, so tightly sealed, how does the plant take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis or let out oxygen into the atmosphere? Let's look into the epidermal layers once again. Can you see these teeny tiny pores? 
you can think of these as plants version of skin pores. If you zoom into them, they look somewhat like this and they are called as the stomata. And the stomata are surrounded by bean shaped cells called guard cells. They are named after their function. They guard the stomata and regulate its opening and closing. They are also the only epidermal cells which are green in color as they contain chloroplast, which means they can also photosynthesize. They can photosynthesize. Now, looking at this diagram, you must be thinking that it is only the lower epidermis that has got uh, that has the stomata well that is not true at all the stomata is present both on the upper and the lower epidermis it is just that the number of stomata on the lower epidermis is much more as compared to the number of stomata on the upper epidermis why do you think that's so let me give you a hint what does the stomata do the stomata takes in carbon dioxide so that the plant can perform photosynthesis. It lets out oxygen produced as a result of photosynthesis and it also, it also lets out water by the process of transpiration. Like kind of like us sweating on a very hot day. Now can you think of why there are more stomata on the lower epidermis as compared to the upper epidermis? Well, you see the upper epidermis gets the direct sunlight. Okay, it gets the direct sunlight which means it has a higher chance of losing water through transpiration. And to prevent too much water loss, more stomata are smartly pay, uh, placed on the lower epidermis where it's cooler and shadier because the lower epidermis does not receive direct sunlight. So it is much cooler and shadier here. And stomata are smartly placed in the lower epidermis to prevent excess loss of water by transpiration. Now, here is another common myth that stomata are only present on leaves. While yes, most of the stomata are present on the leaves, young green branches of the tree that can perform photosynthesis also have stomata. In short, all parts of the plant that are capable of photosynthesizing has the stomata. On the other hand, the roots whose main function is to absorb water and minerals from the soil does not have the stomata. So, stomata is absent in the roots and in the woody branches and stems as I mentioned, the epidermal layer is replaced by a layer of cork. Stomata is also absent here. No epidermis, no stomata. So, the fact is that stomata are present on all photosynthesizing parts of the plant. Now, it's time for a quick recap. The epidermis is made up of a single layer of flat cells with no intercellular spaces. What is its main function? It offers protection against water loss, parasites and physical damage. It has stomata that helps, in, helps take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen and it also participates in transpiration by letting water out in the form of water vapour. And the stomata are surrounded by kidney shaped guard cells which are green in color. They participate in photosynthesis and these guard cells regulate the opening and closing of the stomata.